Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to SM Enlightenment Radio or TV or listening to the Two Healthy Chicks podcast. I'm Jenny. And I'm Ayana. And we are Two Healthy Chicks, providing simple life hacks on this journey to healthy living. So, Ayana, how are you doing tonight? I'm pretty jazzed. I'm, uh, you know, still not home. <laughs> it's been <laughs> like the longest summer ever, and I'm loving every second of it. But, you know, um, you make it work, and I'm happy yes. that we're, we're able to still have our recording. So I'm Love good. It. That's awesome. So what you drinking tonight? What's in your mug? <laughs> so let's keep in mind, I am still on vacation. I just want to preface <laughs> that. Oh, it's going to be a good one. <laughs> <laughs> so I have... Um, some mango seltzer. I have some mango vodka. <laughs> and I have some mango fizz. <laughs> nice. So I'm going to be very wired by the time we're done. Love it. What's we'll in yes. your mug, Jenny? Oh, it is not even nearly as exciting as that. I know. I'm like, I, I think I just need to put my glass down. I just lost. <laughs> For those of you who are not watching but listening, you just missed a very vital visual. So you got to watch us. Yes, You're missing yes, out on the laughter. The yes. No, but I I am actually coming down. To, these are getting even more and more precious because I'm getting down to the bottom of my bottle of the um, pink lemonade uh, inner calm. That's the uh, pink lemonade flavor. And I'm coming down to the end of it. So I love having my wine down with this ashwagandha is amazing for that and i just hope it becomes a permanent product because i want to replace that <laughs> very soon i know I'm about i've to been run using out. mine very sparingly <laughs> yes oh i just can't help it i have it every night i, I just i love it it's such a great way to wind down the day so it's awesome no, i do intercom every night i just don't use the pink lemonade i use that like every three nights you know it's like uh, fine wine <laughs> You were smart about it. I just went like, oh, no, it's going down, like <laughs> going down the hatch. <laughs> <Sapped in. laughs> All right. So tonight we have an awesome topic. We are talking about what it takes to build healthy relationships with other people. So we'll be talking about how to create health for ourselves through communication in relationships. And this is such a great topic because this affects, I mean, this affects every area of our lives, right? It can be beneficial Absolutely. in all kinds of places, like our families, work, friendships, civic organizations. I mean, you name it. It's definitely an episode for everyone. So we are going to be covering three main areas of communication tonight. Uh, the first one is appreciation. Yes, the second is habits and what gets in the way of forming a new habit and what makes it stick. And then the third one is skills. We're going to be sharing some key specific skills to improving our communication. So it's going to be a really valuable episode. And drum roll, please. I am so excited because we are not doing this alone. We have an expert in the house. We have Meredith Bell with us, and I'm really excited. Meredith is an expert in leader and team communications, the author of two books, and the host of the Strong for Performance podcast. She is worked with thousands of business leaders, entrepreneurs, and human resources professionals to successfully implement her company's products. Meredith co-authored her latest book, Connect With Your Team, Mastering the Top 10 Communication Skills, with her business partner, Dr. Dennis Coates. In it, Meredith and Denny provide a step-by-step how-to guide for improving communication at work. We are blessed to have her with us tonight to share her expertise with all of us. So please welcome Meredith Bell. Hello, hello, Jenny and Ayana. It's great to be with you. Oh, thank you. Um, welcome. Yes, it is so great to have you. And um, if there's anything that you wanted to kind of say or elaborate on from your intro um, before we jump into things, or if you just want to jump into things. <laughs> no, I guess all I would add is uh, the expertise I have is from living and, you know, trying these skills myself <laughs> over the years. And the subtitle of our book says Mastering the top 10 communication skills because we never truly master them. You know, it's like a, an elite athlete. They are always working to up level their game. And with communication skills, it's exactly the same. I think that's such a great um, mind uh, 
image um, in light of the Olympics that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, that just makes all the sense in the world. You look, I mean, I, that just totally make it track and field is happening right now, you know, just for the in future when this comes out and just thinking of Usain Bolt. And I remember, you know, many years ago, like he was the fastest man in the world, like incredible and never been done before. And now people are breaking his records. <laughs> like it's crazy. I know, like left and right. It seems like yes. every, every, I don't, what do they call Every heat. Yeah. Another record is broken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty wild. So I think that is so good that we can always improve in these schools never out right for anyone <laughs> yeah and i think no that's pun intended. a good analogy <laughs> because really you know we're always looking to up level our own game there's no need to compare you know ourselves with someone else but looking at how can i be my best self mm. in this moment and uh, part of what we'll talk about tonight is looking at a situation and how we've handled it in, in terms of acquiring the habits we need. It takes that slowing down and reflecting. So I'll mm. explain later how that all fits into everything. Cause we we're so busy, right? Yes. We're moving from thing to thing and part of acquiring good habits and good skills requires some slowing down. Hmm. Ooh, that's good. And that all pours into our overall health. So you may be wondering why we're talking about communication, but if you stop and think about it for a minute, it has so much to do with our overall health. And as we dive deeper, you'll, you'll learn why. Yeah, I love it. That's awesome. So let's go into the first one, appreciation. I think this is such a rich topic um, because so many people just don't get appreciated and feel underappreciated. Would you agree with that? Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, it's very rare, I think, that you find people, whether it's at home or at work, that feel like they're really acknowledged and, you know, uh, and recognized. And so expressing appreciation, you know, we can't demand that from someone else. But what we can do is model it ourselves. By be, raising our level of awareness, that's a really key point. Looking for opportunities to share a positive comment with someone. You know, that's one of the things that is a, a weird um, aspect of our human nature at times. I have seen where someone withholds saying something positive to someone else, and they might say, well, I don't want them to get a swelled head or you know, mm -hmm. this is what they're expected to do. But the truth is we all need to be acknowledged for the good things that we do. Mm -hmm. And it takes so little time and effort to, to really do that. And so, and, and I'll tell you, it doesn't matter what level of success you achieve mm -hmm. either. I will share a story that really hammered this home to me when um, I attended a conference, I've been a business owner for 30 years, and I was attending a, a conference for entrepreneurs. And the fellow that was putting it on was a very successful businessman. And he had like a thousand people there. And he is someone who's a multimillionaire many times over. And whenever, and I went to these conferences more than once. And every time I went, I made a point of going up to him and commenting positively about something I was especially enjoying about that particular conference. And I remember clearly one time when I went up to him, he went, Meredith, you are such a positive person. Can I get you to call me every day and tell me <laughs> nice things? <laughs> and I thought, you know, um, huh. that just goes to show everybody because you know, when people go to conferences, they often complain about the temperature of the room or mm -hmm. something that's not quite right. And so the organizers hear these things. But I'll tell you what else relayed to me that he was impacted by what I did. Because I also sent a note after the conference. I found this perfect card that just mm -hmm. on the front, it almost looked like I could have you know, created it myself. It was nothing <laughs> professional looking, but the sentiment about it was perfect. Mm. And so I made a point of just handwriting a note of all the things I had enjoyed at the conference. 
And do you know the next month when the newsletter came, because they had a monthly newsletter, he had reproduced that card, the front wow. and inside with my handwritten note and took up a whole page. Wow. <laughs> and I thought, surely I'm not the only one <laughs> card commenting. But I think when people sense that you're genuine in mm. what you're saying, that is huge. And I was, and he could feel and see that. Mm. And I think that we simply need to look at opportunities. I know today, and I've been married to my husband almost 40 years now, and today I am much better at mm. expressing my appreciation to him for things that he does. You know, we were talking before we started about what a mechanical yes. he is. He's a mechanical <laughs> engineer, and there's nothing in our house that he can't fix. And I will just tell him, you are such a genius. And, of course, he'll say, well, anybody could do this. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but helping him appreciate that I value mm. his contribution to our home and to our relationship we all get so busy with things that are going mm -hmm. on and we often are looking to other people to express appreciation to us. But yeah. you know what I have found is he appreciates me more and mm. says it more often. So we, you know, need to model it for those in our lives. It's, it's such a mistake to hold back and think I'm going to wait till they notice. Mm. I'm going to wait until somebody else does something. And the fact is, we each can take it upon ourselves to just be aware, even at the grocery store. You mm. know, I, I'll, I'll just notice if the checker is moving fast, I'll just look at him or her and say, you know, I really appreciate how efficient you were mm. at checking me out and smile. Of course, we're wearing a mask, <laughs> but, no, but my eyes will smile, you know, but it's this idea of talk of slowing down enough to recognize the people that we interact mm. with in the smallest of ways. Yeah. You know, the, the concept of modeling appreci appreciation is really significant. I mean, it, it, it speaks to me because I think that instead of expecting or hoping for appreciation and then potentially setting yourself up for disappointment if it doesn't happen, mm -hmm. if you're just focused on modeling it and then it coming back, that is a way more positive to go, make way more positive way to go about life. And I, I, I definitely appreciate that. No pun intended. I appreciate <laughs> that concept of appreciation. <laughs> well, there's something but, else I want to say about appreciation that I learned from um, a, a guy named Dan Sullivan with Strategic Coach. And I was listening mm -hmm. to a podcast. This has been years ago, but it just stuck with me. You know how we, we think of things like land, and investments in stocks going up in value, appreciating. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's one use of the word. But when we, we saw the light bulb go up at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Oh. When we think about appreciating people, one of the things he huh. did that I have started doing more is before he meets with someone, let's say he's got a scheduled meeting, he will jot down things about that person that he values and appreciates. Hmm. So when they come in the room, he doesn't go through a list of things saying, I appreciate this and this and this. No, it's yeah. his mindset about that person, hmm. how he thinks about them, his attitude, his treatment of them. They feel it. Hmm. And so the impact is their value appreciates in his own mind and their value appreciates in their mind, their mind. Wow. because of how he treats them. I yeah. mean, I get chills talking about that. That's amazing. The <laughs> value that you can bring to another human being right. simply mm -hmm. by thinking about what are the things you value about this person before you interact yeah. with them. It's, it's quite profound. Um, yeah. the, the change in attitude, because especially if you find yourself getting annoyed and wanting to, you know, lash out at somebody, if mm -hmm. instead you can pause and think about what is it about this person I value the most? 
Right. And have that at the front of your mind. It's powerful. That's power. Power. Yes, that's exactly what it is. And and it's interesting because like we're told a lot in different trains have had just your your thoughts produce energy that is that's how you perceive the situation that and, and people feel that even through a text message even through and so that is really powerful that is like we could be done right now and like, <laughs> like i got a lot out of it already from this conversation but we're not done we have so much more wow i do not want to go off the topic of appreciation but for the sake of time like we can always come back to that if, if we think of things um because that is goodness i think we could have done the whole podcast on appreciation <laughs> Um, that is really, really amazing, really valuable. Thank you for all of that. Just, I could comment on a bunch of that, but I'm just going to leave it there because that was really <laughs> powerful. Um, because I, I do want to move on to habits then. Um, so creating habits and so what gets in the way of forming new habits? Why are habits so hard to create and what is the key to make them stick? Because I think this is going to be a powerful setup for when we talk about the specific skills that we need to acquire for good communication. Yes. A key thing to recognize is the way the brain works. And that is, as we repeat a behavior over and over again, the brain hardwires a pathway for that. And so that is a physical connection that the brain makes. And so when we're introduced to a new way of doing something, whether it's how we eat, you know, our choice of foods, mm -hmm. our choice of exercise routine, we've got a way that we already are doing mm -hmm. things. And so it's important to recognize that because sometimes we get upset with ourselves and impatient when we don't suddenly change. Well, mm -hmm. I want to compare it to you've got this well-traveled road, okay? And so you're used to going, think of a road you travel all the time. You don't even have to think about it. You know, you can be listening to music or talking to someone. You're not going to get lost because you know it so well. Well, that's how these pathways are in the brain. So when you say, okay, I'm going to change how I eat. I'm going to change how I exercise. That's like going on a gravel dirt road, right? It's bumpy. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. It is not our normal pathway. And so that is why so many people give up hmm. because they haven't realized, oh, I'm going to have to keep working at this because what you have to do is repeat and practice that new behavior until it becomes the super highway. And that right. takes time. Turning yourself. The other thing is it takes support. And that's why mm. having a community of people who care about your success, like, yeah. you know, Weight Watchers has been successful, 12-step programs, because sometimes even with them, there's a sponsor who's helping mm -hmm. you and sticking with you and supporting you along the way. So that's a really key aspect of you know, making a change is get an accountability buddy mm. or get in a group where the people are all trying to improve in the same way. Mm -hmm. And so you're supporting each other as you're going through this awkward phase, because what's really interesting is, as you attempt to change the old way to a new way, you can actually get worse initially because you've got this competition going on in the brain. What should I do? What should I do? <laughs> you're kind of going back and forth. And, and that's when people just, can give up and say, it's not worth it. Hmm. But if they knew going in that this is going to require a lot of practice, think of any elite athlete going back to the Olympics, you know, the hours, the weeks, years that they have spent perfecting their skill. And when they try to make a subtle change and improve, that's difficult because it's different than this one pathway that they have created. So it's applying in all kinds of areas to the brain, you know, a habit, a physical movement, a skill, they're all the same. There are these wirings that happen that cause it to be automatic for us. So we don't have to think of everything. Imagine if we had to be conscious about every single thing <laughs> oh, we do. You know, it would just take a lot of energy. So the way that we form the habit is with focusing on one thing that we're going to improve in and making that decision. This is the one thing I'm going to do. And then taking action on it. 
So you commit to doing what's needed to do, and that's where the practice comes in. The third step is what people often miss Mm. and don't even realize they need to do, which is pause and reflect and ask yourself, how did it go when I did it this way? You know, what do I need to learn from this? What are the takeaways? So here are some questions people can ask themselves. And these, by the way, are great for a parent also. If you're Mm. trying to teach your child to do something new, and they're not going to do it perfectly either. So it requires patience with them too. But getting them to analyze, you know, first or analyze for yourself, what happened? You know, what was the sequence of events and how did you feel about it? So you get it sort of the right and left brain. Then you get it. Why? Why did it happen that way? You know, what was I thinking about? What was my motive? What was going on in my head that caused me to either respond this way or take this action? And then looking at the consequences, what was the outcome? Did I get what I wanted or did I go off the rails or, you know, at least, um, go off track for a little while. And so what do I want to do differently next time? So you really think about the action that you want to take. And what this does is it facilitates, actually accelerates the brain getting that new wiring down because you're pausing to think about what happened and what you have to learn from that past incident to take into the new one. And that's really powerful to do that over time. And it's even more powerful if you write it down, because then that's another way that you're communicating, you know, with your brain. So if something happens, I found it a great way to keep from beating myself up over something that happened instead of being regretful. And I wish I hadn't done that. Then just take time to write out um, and think through what you're going to do differently next time so you can move Mm -hmm. on from there. Yes, I love that concept of no regrets. I try to live my life that way. I feel like everything that has happened and is happening is with a purpose, for a purpose. So however it played out in the past, no regrets. Just learn what you can from it and move forward. Um, So yes, and actually it makes me think of the last couple of weeks where I spent some time with my sister and she continually beat me in Scrabble, but we'll just put that on the (laughs) shelf. Um, And my brother-in-law always made it a habit to be like, oh, you lost again. No, I didn't lose. I learned a lesson. Learned a lesson. So we'll just move forward. Same concept. No regrets. I love that. Love it. So we will wrap up this segment. Thank you so much for all of that just priceless information. Um, We thank you again for joining us in this conversation about communication, where we talked about showing appreciation and forming or reforming habits. Be sure to come back for part two when we dive into specific skills, um, the meat essentially of communication. So you are listening to Two Healthy Chicks podcast on SM Enlightenment Radio and TV. Welcome back, and thanks again for tuning in to SM Enlightenment Radio or TV or the Two Healthy Chicks podcast. I'm Ayana. And I'm Jenny. And we are Two Healthy Chicks. Today we're talking with Meredith Bell about creating healthy relationships through improving our communication. We discussed appreciation and habits in part one. So here in part two, we're going to dive into skills. So I will hand the mic to you, Meredith. This is all you. (laughs) Well, thank you. Well, I think uh, the first one that um, we had discussed might be of benefit to everyone is this whole thing of conflict Mm -hmm. and resolving conflicts because most of us weren't raised to really (laughs) deal effectively with conflict right Uh, a lot of times we avoid it or we simply don't know how to do it and so we stuff it stuff our feelings stuff our 
reaction to things. And then suddenly we explode and people wonder what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and really the thing about conflict is that we need to understand what it is. First of all, it's inevitable because as human beings, our desires, what we want will often be different from what others want. And that's what we're really talking about. <laughs> I want to do this and you want to do that. It's not yeah. that we just have difference op of opinions. Mm. We want to take different actions. And so as a result of that, we run into butting heads. And a lot of times we dig our heels in because we don't want to be wrong. That's a key aspect of our egos mm -hmm. getting wrapped up in this. And so one of the first things to do is recognize this is normal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nothing weird. And the first step is to just find out, ask the other person, you know, what is it they really need? Because they might say, I want this, I want this. But what we want to do is kind of peel the layers back to find out what's the need they have that's driving that request. And then once we feel like we understand it and it requires listening, listening is the foundation mm -hmm. of all the communication skills. Yeah. And so once we understand their need, then it's helpful to explain what ours is. So we tell them, you know, and, and we have to get honest with ourselves too. What is it that I am really wanting to have? What is it I need? Mm -hmm. And to be honest and vulnerable. See, this requires two people being willing to, you know, just tell the truth to each other. And sometimes we think our way is the only way when in fact there are other options. And that's why uh, the third aspect of this, after you ask them and you explain your own, is to brainstorm and say, you know, there are other means to get to this outcome we both want. <clears throat> and that's one of the key things is what's the outcome, you know, that we would like to have. And, and just being creative, recognizing we can use creativity here. We can be open in exploring. And I don't have to dig my heels in. I don't have to say it's my way or the highway. I can say we can both win here. And if we can come with that spirit, then we're willing to entertain different options and come up with a solution that really satisfies both parties. So here's an example. Our daughter is 37 now, but when she was in high school, she came to us in her junior year and said, oh, the French club is going to France. I want to go to France. We said, well, that's nice. How are you going to pay for it? Yes, that's what <laughs> I was know? thinking. <laughs> and, and she said that she wanted us to pay for it. So here we had a conflict, right? <laughs> she wanted us to pay for it. My husband and I said, no. I don't think so. So we had to think about, all right, what is it we are willing to do? What is she willing to do? So we talked about it. Once she knew there was no way we were going to fund the whole thing, we said, okay, if you can find a way to earn half the money, we'll put up the other half. Mm -hmm. And so she agreed to that. So she came up with different things she could do like babysitting. But one of the things she came up with was a true win-win for us. And that was for her to fix meals at night, dinner, oh. and we would pay her. Because <laughs> that wow. was worth it to us to have her <laughs> prepare meals when we're both coming home from work and uh -huh. feeling, you know, like we don't want to cook. And so that was another win-win inside that first one. And so the goal was get her to France. The method how to was the thing we had to discuss. Hmm. And so it's, but, you know, even, and I know this sounds weird to people to be playful about it, but we hmm. take ourselves so darn seriously and our <laughs> opinion so seriously. It's like, yes. I'm afraid of looking bad. I'm afraid of appearing to be a loser if I give in. And if we can totally reframe that and say, you know what, we both have this outcome we want. What are some ways that we could look at that would meet both of our needs? Mm -hmm. And just agree that we will, 
you know, set our egos aside, set the emotions, calm down, in other words, and say, let's look at this as sort of a game. How can we play with these ideas instead of, uh, uh, you know, just really butting heads about it? Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a key thing when you look at resolving conflict and I, Anna, I could see your face. <laughs> what are you thinking? It's just, it's resonating so deeply because that's such a, um, it's such a novel concept to just set. It's almost in my mind, which maybe I'm looking at it backwards. And here I thought I was this expert communicator. It's almost like putting the wagon before the horse like if you're just stamping hey this is what we want we both want the same thing so how do we get there let's figure out how to get there together that is novel to me I feel like that would would I don't know probably resolve nine out of ten of my conflicts a lot easier with a lot less stress um, but I do have a question for you with regards to the first step on um, ask, do you find that simply asking, no matter how you phrase the question, but just finding out what is it that the other person wants, do you find that the other party usually answers in some way, shape or form? Oh, it takes some patience and work sometimes. Okay. Because they have to trust that you're asking this out of genuine curiosity, yeah, which is really important, as opposed to information you're going to use against them to push mm. for your your position. So to you know yeah. just come across open and say, you know, I really understand, want to understand where you're coming from. What is it that is behind your saying you want this? And just get them to talk about why is this important to you? I'm not challenging it. I want to understand. And mm -hmm. I think sometimes we just fail to let the person know where we're coming from. So they mm -hmm. get suspicious about our motives. Mm -hmm. Why are you asking me this? You know, yeah. <laughs> instead right, of right. just just lowering the voice, the tone of voice, you know, because that's huge. How mm -hmm. we sound makes a huge difference. Why on earth do you want that? You know, <laughs> versus, oh, tell me more about why that's important to you. I really want to understand. It's huge, right? There's no difference there at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's the number one thing in our household. It's not what you said, it's how you said it. <laughs> it's so true. And we are often unaware, you know, uh, which ties in with feedback, you know, when somebody says, um, gives us feedback and we get defensive about it instead of mm -hmm. saying, oh, thank you. I didn't realize I was doing that. You know, that diffuses amazing amounts of things if we're just willing to say thank you to someone mm -hmm. for pointing out something that maybe was a blind spot. It, it all goes back to slowing down and not feeling I must be right. Because mm -hmm. that's what it all comes down to. I've got to be the right one here. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. a level of humility there too, as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, to Absolutely. say to be because I'll tell you, it goes back to modeling what we talked about earlier. Yeah, we are willing to acknowledge. Oh, you know, I jumped to conclusions there. Mm -hmm. I apologize because that's the other thing we often don't want to do is apologize because then we think, oh, I'll lose face. You know, they'll respect mm -hmm. me less. But the fact is. Whether it's as a parent, as a spouse, as a boss, you know, at work or a coworker, when we're willing to own what we've done, if it's a mistake, if it's something we said that was hurtful to someone and just say, I apologize, you know, I lost my cool and I am sorry I said that and I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, you know, I, or I didn't mean to criticize you in front of the others and embarrass you, whatever it is we've done, because we're human, we're going to make mm -hmm. mistakes. But to, the quicker we own it, the less time we spend whirling around in our heads, feeling guilty mm -hmm. and shame. And then mm -hmm. that leads to other behavior we're not proud of. And, you know, the dynamics just escalate. <laughs> so the quicker we can yeah. say, sorry. And I think that awareness piece comes into play here as well. You, you mentioned that in the beginning with appreciation, but I think it's it's very applicable here as well, because if you're not even aware that you tend to do these things or react quickly or whatever, um, first of all, if you don't have that level of awareness, 
ask people around you, <laughs> ask the people you live with, you know, like they'll let you know. And because you might not even realize you are quick to react or just how you react. And then once you are aware to pay attention to that in conversations. And I know when things are pointed out to me, it's like, oh, do I do that? I don't do that. And then you start paying attention. I'm like, oh, I just did that. <laughs> yes. Yes. In fact, one of the key things that I would encourage the listeners to do, and this takes courage, but what a payoff you, if you do it. And that is to go to people you live with or work with individually and ask this person one question. What's one thing I could do differently that would make your experience working with me, living with me more enjoyable for you? Hmm. That's powerful. That is powerful. One, you're wow. only asking for one thing. So even if they have a laundry list, just one thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no, no, no. I one said one. <laughs> but that's huge because that's a way of acknowledging I'm not perfect. I want the conditions in which you are around me, whether it's at home or at work, mm -hmm. to be pleasant for both of us. Right. So what's something right. I may not be aware of? that might be causing problems for you or could just mm -hmm. elevate our relationship and just open the door for them to tell you and then thank them. <laughs> That's the key thing. No matter what they say, thank you. I didn't know that. That because, might be the difficult part. <laughs> well, yeah. it is because you know what we're tempted to do, right? Is justify, explain, defend, be mm -hmm. right. See, it all goes back to the need to be right. If we can set that aside and simply say, I am a learner here in this life. Mm -hmm. I'm on a journey mm -hmm. of learning. And so this is one of my teachers. This person can help me learn something about myself that I didn't know. So I can be better with them and with myself. Yeah. It's a whole different attitude. <laughs> it is like that whole feedback, constructive criticism. I mean, it is just, it, it's interesting. We had had a, a training a little while back and then I was giving that same training um, to a, a group of uh, business owners. And um, and it was all about that that feedback and receiving that. And, and the person who originally gave the training was saying she'll never forget that when she received that in her teaching, um, when someone said, you, you don't take constructive criticism well and stuff. And she's like, that has always stuck with me. And that was the changing point. So I think that's something great for us to strive for is, is being open to that and having an open heart to hear what people say um, right. that you could possibly do differently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the other things um, that we wanted to talk about too, was this whole idea of how do you coach people to think for themselves? Mm -hmm. And an important aspect of that is really, again, a single question. In our book, we talk about lots of questions that you you ask, but there's a simple one that everybody can think about, and that is simply, well, what do you think? Mm. Um, because sometimes, especially if we're in a leadership role and we've sort of trained people not to take risks or not to do things because we're going to get upset with them if they make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And so if they, if we're noticing folks coming to us one of the best gifts we can give them is ask questions that kind of toss it back to them. So they are now having to think for themselves about, well, how would I handle this? How, mm -hmm. what, what are my options in this situation? Um, so instead of jumping in, one of the ways to kind of rewire your brain is to think, ask a question mm. <laughs> instead of tell or right. advise. Um, so when somebody says, well, how should I do this? Well, um, what have you considered so far? Right. See, it's similar it, to that first step. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, the fundamental thing you can just remember, and I mean, you can come up with different questions, but the fundamental one, fundamental one is what do you think? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Powerful. And if they pause, this is where it really requires self-restraint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because if they're quiet, we think, oh, they need me to rescue them. I need to provide the answer. I should be saying something. When in truth, you just need to give them time to think. Mm. <laughs> because 
think about it if somebody asks you a difficult question. Yeah. You don't have a ready answer. And so if you're asking a question that someone is not used to dealing with, they need a little time to pause and consider how they want to respond. And so get comfortable with silence. I've learned that in leadership roles and, and parenting, which, you know, they have very similar aspects. Yes, <laughs> um, yes they do. But you know, silence can be so powerful. I mean, I have to admit, sometimes I've used it as a weapon, so to speak, you know, in a, a conflict and you just, you know, you say something, you just wait. All right. Well, at some point they're going to have to say something. But in this case, it is definitely a way more positive use. Um, <laughs> Silence can, I have to admit, sometimes I've used silence as a, a tool, a negative tool, so to speak, in conflict where I'm like, okay, well, I said this and we're just going to wait because at some point you got to say something because people <laughs> are usually so uncomfortable with silence. <laughs> but this is a way more positive way to use it. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love that concept because at some point, yes, people are thinking and just give them a moment. But eventually they're going to have to say something. So I do, I, I appreciate that quite a bit. Yeah, that's awesome. So how about getting buy-in? Um, tell us about that. Sure. Uh, again, as a parent or as a leader, sometimes it's tempting to um, use your position of authority to direct someone to do something. But, you know, kids don't like this and adults hate it when we when we treat them that way. And so the idea of getting buy in is when something needs to be done, whether it's a big project or even a you know relatively small task to sit down and discuss with the person, you know, here's what we need and get them to be involved with it. That's what buy in really means. They're involved in discussing what needs to be done and the deadline so that you're not telling them I've got to have this by Friday at two o'clock, no matter what, instead, you know, ask, letting them know this really needs to be done by Friday at two. Is that feasible for you? And if they say no, then you get talking about, well, what is it you need? Are there resources you're lacking or what is it that would cause you to not be able to meet this deadline so we can work together to figure out how to eliminate those obstacles? And so when they're having the opportunity to discuss it and give more input, then they're more likely to agree and stick with the commitment. So it's the commitment that's really important in this process. If you are just telling someone to do something and they're not really committing to it, you don't know for sure that they're planning to make sure it gets done. Yeah. <laughs> and so to clarify and make sure you have both understood what you've agreed to and then just close it out with. And so we have an agreement that this is going to be done by this and I'm going to take care of one, two, three to make sure you've got the resources you need or the people or whatever it is. And then you're going to deliver this so that you you've mapped it out with them involved. And I think that's really the key. And also just the idea of setting agreements mm -hmm. is an adult approach to take rather than dictating something or directing mm -hmm. and, you know, again, using position, as the reason why somebody needs to do something. It's helpful yeah. to get them to sense that it's important for them too. Super powerful. Um, these are these are amazing. These skills are fabulous. And um, I know we in the interest of we are running out of time. I'm wondering if we can just do one quick bonus about how, and maybe this can't be done in a very short amount of time, but how can we continuously improve over time? Is there, like you've given us so many great skills, so many great things to be focusing on, questions to use. Is there a little tip or trick in the last minute that we have of how we can continuously improve over time? Yes. The first thing is focus on one thing. Don't try to attack everything at once or change everything at once. What's one thing? And that's where going and asking people, what's one thing I could do differently or that you'd like to see me improve in? 
that would make a difference in your experience living or working with me. And so you identify what that is, or you may already know it. And so recognizing what it is, committing to it and getting support for that. So you have at least an accountability buddy that you're checking in with on a regular basis and then committing to the practice. Even if it's small, do something small every day that's consistent. So you build up that consistency of practice and give yourself credit when you do things well, Mm. instead of being judging, you know, this critical self-talk that we do Mm -hmm. say, wow, I did that. So count your wins and, Mm. and re so you're reinforcing the things you want instead of focusing on where you fell short and just recognize that's all part of the learning and the growing and the improving is there are going to be times when you don't hit the mark and that's okay because it's part of the process. So being gentle with yourself, and compassionate with yourself, I think is really key to sticking with, with it and making progress and feeling good about yourself in the long run. Because if you quit, then there's that whole judgment and critical, you know, spiral we can get into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So powerful. Oh my goodness, Meredith, this conversation has been incredibly powerful. I know I personally have gotten so many nuggets. I have been writing down. So if you saw my down, like I was writing what you said. So thank you for this. Thank you for being willing to come and share your time with us and with our audience. Um, I know this is going to be so impactful for so many people in our audience. So thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Thank you. I'm thank so you. glad to be here. And I will just say that um, if people want more details, just pick up a copy of the book, Connect With Your Team. And how can they um, get that and get in touch with you? Our website is growstrongleaders.com. And so they can learn more about that book and one called Peer Coaching Made Simple. They can learn more about our tools and find my podcast, which you mentioned earlier, Strong for Performance. I would love to have them check that out too. And I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter if they'd like to connect there. Wonderful. Well, I highly advise all of our audience to do that. Definitely connect with Meredith. And thank you again, Meredith, so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. It was so much fun. You're both wonderful (laughs) at what you do. (laughs) Thank you. All right, Um, Jenny. So and that that was that was tons of information. Very useful. I think I might actually employ some of it this evening, but I won't spill the beans on how. We'll just leave it there. (laughs) Um, So we, in the interest of time, we will skip our A pod. But you know, I had to get the theme music in there, right? Okay. So we'll skip that. But if you want an A pod, you know, you can go to our later or our earlier episodes Mm -hmm. and our later episodes because we always have an A-pod. But what is your random fact, Jenny? Oh, you're starting with your random fact. Oh, okay, I'll go first. So (laughs) a random fact is ironically, my undergrad degree um, was in corporate communications. So this topic was like speaking to my soul and I learned so much. Like, you know, like I said, I thought I was this expert communicator, never thinking that I couldn't learn anything, but I learned a ton in this very short amount of time. So of course I've already downloaded Meredith's book. Um, <laughs> and yeah, and actually it was with a concentration in message construction, ironically. So there yeah. you go. Wow. Well, that's very cool. So mine doesn't tie into the theme, but since you're talking about undergrad degree, then I'll just do my undergrad degree. My undergrad degree was elementary education and Spanish and secondary education. So there you go. It's all communication related. So it is related to our topic. (laughs) Very nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Two Healthy Chicks. We hope as usual that you've I don't know, you found at least a nugget or two of information. I'm sure you did. So again, if you want to get more information, please feel free to find our Facebook group. That is our VIP group. It is two healthy chicks to the number two healthy chicks on Facebook. And you will see more information, including a link to Meredith's book. Anything else for our listeners, Jenny? That's it. Have a great day whatever you're having, (laughs) whatever you're having. Thanks for listening to two healthy chicks on SM enlightenment radio or TV. Good night.